So as I was reading over the Pentecost scriptures this week, I got stuck at that line that says, the people sneered and said, they're drunk. They're drunk. Because they were acting as if they were filled with something that the people didn't understand. They sneered, the scripture says. Let me ask you this. Have you ever seen something that you didn't understand and sneered at it and said, we don't do that kind of thing around here. We don't dance in the aisles. We don't shout out, praise Jesus. <laughs> Let me do that again. Praise Jesus. <laughs> we don't do that. You, we sneer. You know why? Because I don't mean this to sound the way that it sounds, but we white people have a tendency to be the frozen chosen, as we are called. <laughs> we don't do that. So I understand what it means when the scripture says they sneered. They looked down their nose at those Galileans that were understanding all of these people that had been touched by the power of the Holy Spirit and were talking all different kinds of languages. And the Galileans were understanding it for the first time ever, saying, how is this happening? I understand what it means to sneer about something that I don't think is the way God wants it to be. Anybody else here know what it means to sneer when you think what's going on isn't what God wants? You see, there's a problem with that sentence right there. When you think God doesn't know what God should be doing. I was kind of that way this whole entire week. Maybe that's why the Holy Spirit spoke to me and stuck me right there on sneer. <laughs> because some of you may have known I have been planning this big annual meeting for the Illinois Conference. It takes a year to plan the Illinois Conference. And let me tell you something, everybody can talk a language that you never understand <laughs> when it comes to planning that. If you're listening, Justo, it's okay. Um, Anyway, I was planning this meeting, and this past three or four days has been the culmination of all of that planning. And I don't know if any of you know about me, because I try to keep my faults under wraps as much as I possibly can, <laughs> that when I'm planning a meeting, I want it to go my way. But the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you need to stop sneering. I'm going to show you why you need to stop sneering because you don't think like God thinks. So I'm going to share with you three or four, maybe three places where my sneering was getting out of control, but the Holy Spirit, the one that rushes in and reminds us that God is the one making all the plans, said to me, be still and know that I am God. So the first place was when I found out we were going to have a liturgical dancer. <laughs> Being who I am, I like to dance. But I've never understood liturgical dance. I never got that stuff. That I never did it because I never got it. I never wanted it to be in a worship service. And so when I heard we were going to have liturgical dance, I was just like... Okay, that wasn't in my plan for what worship was going to be, but that's okay. And so it got to the point where liturgical dance was coming up in the worship service, and I was standing in the back, and somebody walked up to me and said, you know, I've always wanted to liturgically dance in a worship service, but somebody told me that that was kind of crazy and we shouldn't be doing it. And I heard the Holy Spirit inside me say, sneering. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, the liturgical dancer came down the aisle, and she went like this. And her face was just filled with this glory. Choir, she went like this. Her face was filled with this glory. And right as she did that, the word was praise. And her face was filled with this glow, this light of being in the midst of the Spirit while she was dancing. You see, I didn't understand liturgical dance because it wasn't a language that I knew about speaking. 
I didn't get why anybody would want to hop around in front of the people. I'm a frozen chosen. That's the kind of stuff we don't do in worship service. But Marilyn went like this. And I understood the language that she was speaking for the very first time. And the Holy Spirit went, pay attention to that. Pay attention to the language. Hear it. Understand it as this woman speaks in a way that you've never been able to hear her speak. That was the first thing. And I went, okay, all right. I can be okay. I can understand. I can do this. Where before I would have told you that the Holy Spirit was always telling me, don't do liturgical dance. You see, I don't think like God thinks. And God will bring a message in a language that sometimes I don't want to understand. And when I don't want to understand it, I won't understand it no matter what. But this time, I understood the language of liturgical dance. The next time that the Spirit said to me, sneering, was when I was thinking about all of the stuff that had to be done in this worship service that had been so meticulously crafted to do everything it was supposed to do exactly the way that we thought it should go. And the choir master stood up and he started to have the choir and the congregation sing this song, this nice, beautiful song that means, I will praise the Lord. And the words of the song go, alabare, alabare, alabare a mi senor. And I'm thinking, that's okay, people are clapping. But from way back here, where I had seated him and he was supposed to stay, burst forth the new Illinois Conference interim minister. He just burst out on the stage. He was supposed to sit back there and be quiet. <laughs> That's what I told him to do. He is Puerto Rican, or as he likes to say, New Yorican, meaning that he is of Puerto Rican descent, born in New York City. <laughs> or in New York, not New York City, but New York. He was supposed to stay back there in his chair and be quiet. I put him where he was. He was to speak eighth, not first, eighth. So he was in the eighth chair. And he was supposed to sit there. And all of a sudden, he is out on the dais. I didn't even talk to the choir director later to see how he felt. But here is Justo. And he's out there going, Alabare, Alabare. And he's directing the people. I'm like, what is he doing? And I had this huge smile on my face. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, listen to that language of joy. Listen to the language of joy that is coming out in this man who did not stay in his space because I called him out of it. I called him out, the Holy Spirit said, not you. It occurs to me that every time I try to put somebody in the box that I think that they need to be in, the Holy Spirit will call them out of it. And I have to learn that language. I have to learn the language that I don't understand. Now, let me also tell you that at one point, our interim conference minister was up on the pews like this, dancing. <laughs> dancing like this, up on the pews. I could see the sneers in the clergy people going, what is he doing? And I felt myself coming down the aisle dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, things are gonna change at St. Paul because I got a couple new languages. Let me tell you the next language that I heard. So everything's going well. I had to come home, do the wedding rehearsal. The whole way home from the wedding rehearsal, I'm thinking, what's going wrong, what's going wrong, what's going wrong, what's going wrong? I get back, I find out that the first time ever, the conference president stood up and gave a speech and there was a standing ovation. First time ever I was told that the conference president got a standing ovation for his report about the conference. I'm thinking, there must be something going on. The Holy Spirit is speaking a language and I better pay attention because I've had already today two instances of it happening. So the next day, Saturday, 
8.30 in the morning is the communion worship service. And I'm thinking everything's going fine, everything's going great. But you know, communion is supposed to be like this and this and this. There's rules for communion, right? So I am watching communion going on. It's going great. Terrell Murph, Reverend Dr. Terrell Murph was leading worship service and the, the communion was going great. We had all the communion servers up there. I had cut tiny, tiny little pieces of gluten-free bread so everybody felt like they were welcomed. Everything was going just by plan. And then Terrell came out to stand in front of us all. But when Terrell came out, he had no shoes on. <laughs> And he stood there and he preached in his sock feet. And I looked up at the chair, or he didn't preach, he prayed. I looked up at the chair, there are Terrell's shoes. I'm like, what's he got, a blister? What's going on? <laughs> Why on earth does this man have his shoes off in worship service? I didn't say it to him like that, however. Terrell, you know me. I didn't say it to him like that. I went up to him later and I said, Terrell, I'm interested, why are your shoes off? He says, oh, that's just my thing. I said, well, what thing is it? I'm interested to know. And he says, well, you see, all of this to me is holy ground. When I step in that pulpit, it's all holy ground around me. So like Moses, I remove my shoes in reverence for the one who has called me to this privilege. The Holy Spirit said, listen. To that. Hear and understand that new language of reverence for what I am doing in this world. You know, it occurs to me that the Holy Spirit makes us very uncomfortable sometimes to teach us a lesson. Not a test, not one of these trials that you don't ever feel like you're going to get through in your life, but the Holy Spirit will show us something that we think we possibly will never ever be able to do in our lives just to prove to us that it can be done. Just to show us and convict us that we can change, that we can be different, that we can understand the language of the Spirit in our lives, that we can be different, renewed, passion-filled, people in this world. That we can be the people who carry the power of the Holy Spirit, that we are not too small to do that, that we are so large, filled with that Spirit, that can change this world. And we don't have to have shoes on to do it. We can dance on the pews. We could hang from the rafters if that's what the Spirit told us to do. We can dance it out. We don't have to do it the same old way over and over and over again. And can I just tell you that doing the same thing over and over and over again is not getting us anywhere as the people of God in this world. Every day I read on some sort of blog or some sort of formal church stuff, the church is dying, what are we going to do? The church is going to die. It's going to be gone by 2075. What will we do? We are killing the church. Jesus is not dead. Jesus is alive. The Holy Spirit is alive. If the church is dying, we're the ones killing it. Because we cannot do anything different than come in and sing the exact hymns that we're supposed to sing when we sing them and do the right thing and have a preacher who wears a robe, no shoes on, no. We can't do that. Because we haven't listened to the language that the Spirit is speaking to us in. We've resisted it. We've not wanted to hear it. And I'm not just talking about St. Paul United Church of Christ. I'm talking about the church universal. <coughs> We have started to push away the Spirit so much, even from the very beginning, that we find ourselves in a place where we're all worried that the church is going to be gone in 50 years. What will we do? We need to hear a new language. We need to hear a new language that says to us, get up and dance. Husto had the entire 
Illinois annual conference that was there yesterday, out in the aisles, dancing to different songs. There were still some sneering as he had those of us who wanted to hear that language, dancing. Husto served ice cream in the historic chapel of Hammerschmidt Chapel of Elmhurst College. <laughs> Hi, Husto. Husto broke the rules. And guess what? We all survived. And you should have seen the people gobbling down that ice cream. We couldn't get it out to them fast enough because it was a new language. We can feast in a historic building. And if something gets broken, we'll fix it. We didn't have to be afraid. If we are to be the people of God, we have to be the people of God. And the people of God are the ones who are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to hear where the Spirit is calling us to change the world. Pentecost did not occur. The people were not uh, filled with the Holy Spirit to hide it for themselves and hold on to it for themselves. Pentecost occurred so that the whole kingdom would break open. So that everyone could speak the language of God in this world. So that everyone could understand the language of God in this world. And if you don't think the language of God is only love, joy, peace, harmony, then perhaps maybe you are not listening, you are not hearing, you are not understanding the language that God is speaking to you in. The language of God does not have hate in it. The language of God does not have despair. The language of God does not have violence. The language of God is designed to change us, not harm us. And we can only be changed by the power and the language of love in this world. So maybe I'm going to preach with my shoes off a few more times a year. You know, I once had a pastor tell me, you can't preach with sandals on in the summertime. Remember I told you that? You can't preach with sandals on because you're going to make the men distracted. <laughs> Not so distracting, fellas. So imagine my shock when the conference minister stepped forward in his open-toed sandals the other day. You see, we've bogged ourselves down with our own thoughts of how it should be and doing that has prevented us from hearing and understanding how the Spirit says it is. Do you understand that should be cancels it is? How we need to live is always knowing it is cancels should be. And to do that, we have to, as I told the children, want <coughs> to hear the Holy Spirit in our lives. So my only question for you today to work on, to ask yourselves, to chew about is, do you want to hear the Spirit in your life? Do you want to hear the language that the Spirit is speaking to you? Do you want to be filled with that power? because only you can answer that question. But if you do, maybe we'll dance next week. Maybe we'll eat ice cream next week. Maybe we'll take our shoes off. Amen. Amen.